Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. I've got three stories to share with you, all within the topic, within the realm of cryptocurrency regulation, or should I just say lack thereof. We'll start with this one from the Crypto Basic titled, Attorney Deaton, crush me in a debate if anyone thinks I spewed QAnon conspiracy about Ethereum. And so you'll see as we go through this, it is indeed the case that all sorts of people have claimed that the facts surrounding the SEC v. Ripple case, specifically having to do with Bill Hinman and getting paid while uh, giving favorable verbal treatment to specific cryptocurrencies, that that's all fact. But what you'll see is that time and again, people claim that it's just a big conspiracy, which couldn't be further from the truth because these are just facts that you can't dispute. But again and again and again, you see certain people claiming that it's a conspiracy theory and then when confronted by attorney John Deaton, they suddenly no longer have free time to discuss the matter. Isn't that very curious? Um, also, there's this headline from Blockworks. CFTC chair says Ether is a commodity, hence that SEC disagrees. Well, how about that? Now, of course, don't forget, everything's so perfectly clear in terms of what is a security and what isn't. It's so clear that the chair of the CFTC says that ETH, uh, you know, it's a commodity, but uh, the SEC just disagrees. <laughs> Oh, but everything's so clear. Everything's so clear. And then I've also got some comments from uh, Eleanor Tarrant, who is a Fox Business journalist. And it's it's on the topic of some stuff that was written by uh, some members of Congress. And they actually cited what happened with uh, with Bill Hinman. Uh, well, she, uh, Eleanor Tarrant also cited that. And it's just interesting to see that, you know, it, these are people who I think it's very clear to characterize as anti-crypto. And they're still recognizing the problem of the, the revolving door where, you know, you're working at the highest levels of the, the United States government. Maybe you're an SEC chair, but then you go to work for a crypto firm. Well, <laughs> what a revolving door that is. So plenty to discuss. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. OK, so into this first story where Attorney Deaton is effectively challenging people to a debate if they're saying that he is actually spouting conspiracy theory nonsense, because he sure as hell is not. Um, and, and rather than read through the story, I'm just going to tell you where this all came from. There was this tweet from my fellow XRP YouTuber, uh, digital asset investor, just the other day. And he said, so now instead of investigating ETHgate and SEC conflicts, Coindesk is comparing it to QAnon conspiracies. They've never disputed any facts, but it's a conspiracy. Grand conspiracy, that is. Wow. This is how you know we, we are directly over the target. And then he shared this screen grab from the article. Um, a couple things I do want to note here. This article, it is an opinion piece. Uh, and so opinions can be all over the board. Now, I, I just kind of skimmed through this thing. It's, it's somewhat long. But look at the headline. I actually like the headline. The Rise and Fall of Bitcoin Culture. And the author here, Dr. Paul J. Dylan Innes, just kind of shreds Bitcoin maximus from what I can see. And I actually really like that aspect of it. But if you get to the part that uh, DAI highlighted, I just wanted to note so we've got full context here. Um, he was noting the types of things that Bitcoin maxis will spout. And so you'll and you put these in, in bullet point form. So this is the part that you can see again, uh, DAI highlighted here. So here seems some things that the author in his opinion piece cited Bitcoin maxis might see. No, or might say rather. Number one, Bitcoin only. Two, wanting Ethereum to be a security more than the Securities and Exchange uh, Commission. Uh, three, QAnon style conspiracies about Joseph Lubin and consensus. Okay, so here's where we do run into a bit of a problem. So even if he's spouting that it's Bitcoin Maxi saying that, uh, the, the stuff that's being spouted publicly about Joe Lubin and consensus, it is not a conspiracy. They're just factual statements surrounding this, clear obvious impropriety. And so if you want to talk about what's in the hearts and the minds of these people, okay, fine. Can't technically know for sure, but here are the facts. They got paid X amount of dollars, like Hinman, for instance, got paid $15 million over a period of several years or so and uh, from his law firm. And he said things that benefited his law firm, you know, having it because they're a member of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance. Like, these are just facts. And so, so it's it's right to call that out because of the author here, this is where you're going to lose me, the, the author on this Coindesk piece, if he's saying that those types of, of things are conspiracy theories, no, you did lose me, even though I'd broadly agree with most of the rest of the stuff about how terrible Bitcoin maxi trolls are. It's, it's just completely awful. 
Um, and so in response to that, attorney John Deaton wrote to DAI and said, if anyone at Coindesk is suggesting that I spew QAnon conspiracies, I volunteer to be crushed in a debate or civil discussion by one of their top-notch journalists. I mean, if I'm espousing QAnon-type conspiracies, it should be easy to expose and humiliate me on a live stream. Yeah, exactly. The problem being, for anybody that's claiming that this is a conspiracy theory, the facts are not on their side. They're, they're, it's just... And, and that's, that's what bothers me so much about all this. And that's why after, after <laughs> looking at this, earlier tonight I tweeted this out, I wrote, Isn't it telling that everyone who claims that Eathgate is nothing more than a wild conspiracy refuses to publicly debate John Deaton or even have a civil discussion with him? It never happens. These people just drop verbal bombs and then run away. Why might that be? And there are a bunch of uh, really thoughtful comments and uh, somebody named Digital Asshat, which is an awesome name, which is one of the reasons I wanted to highlight this comment, <laughs> said, I'm going to block you and say I want no part of this conversation and then do nothing but speak on the offense of our conversation and keep blocking people until my world looks up to me. Yeah, didn't that kind of happen with uh, Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson? Just uh, block everybody that disagrees and claim that they're the, the troublemakers and then it just goes away, right? Isn't that, isn't that kind of how it goes here? So really, the only exception you might be able to argue to this would be uh, Ben Armstrong. He he did say that there are certain things surrounding the, the whole Eathgate thing were literally conspiracy theories. Um, now, granted, it has been about half a year since he, he said that. And it, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm pulling from memory here, <clears throat> but it may have been the case that although he did use that terminology of conspiracy theory, I, I don't think he's at a point where he does or, or necessarily has disputed the facts of the case. So I, I don't recall him anyway. I mean, to maybe I could remember. If he flipped and he's the one ex exception, awesome. But I don't know that he ever actually, <clears throat> excuse me, um, was, would say things like, you know, uh, is, he, is he actually denying <laughs> that, you know, Bill Hinman got paid while saying things that was very positive for you? Like, I, I'm not aware of anything along those lines. But you, you, you do have people, very prominent people, that say that it really, everything surrounding, like everything surrounding it is just a conspiracy theory. Like for instance, even Joseph Hall, he was, um, that's a former SEC employee, by the way, an attorney. And Joseph Hall was interviewed uh, by um, uh, Tony on the Thinking Crypto YouTube channel. I think it was the beginning part of this year. And he said it was a conspiracy theory. And then as soon as people started responding back to him, like, whoa, 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 hey, just to be clear, here's the facts. Uh, he just went silent all of a sudden. He just, no, no, no time to talk anymore. You know, and then you have the whole debacle that happened with Charles Hoskinson, you know, founder of Cardano. He's, none of these people, I'm they just don't want to talk. Because it's easier to just not talk. It's easier to go run and hide than admit that you were wrong. And that's what we just keep seeing here. Um, then there was this from Blockworks. CFTC chair says Ether is a commodity. Hence that SEC disagrees. Well, how about that? Because, look, I still, I do not believe for a second that ETH is in the clear. Not that I want, <laughs> I don't want the SEC to go after ETH in any capacity. I do not. But I'm just warning here, especially with the switch to proof of stake, which just recently happened. Uh, they're just that much bigger of a target. And there's different people at the top levels of the SEC. Uh, and, and so the people that were protecting it, like Bill Henman and Jay Clayton, they're no longer there. So, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying it's not impossible uh, to see him go out. So, and, and you know, you know, part of what may determine that is how things shake out for a library and Ripple. If things go very poorly for library and Ripple, then good luck, ETH holders, which is me, by the way. ETH is the first cryptocurrency I ever purchased in my entire life, almost five whole years ago, and I still hold it. Uh, no, I don't want that to happen. But check this out. The piece reads as follows. The jostling between the CFTC and the SEC continued in New York on Monday with CFTC chair Rostin Bainham saying he sees Ether as a commodity, not a security. Well, praise the Jesus, I'm so happy to hear that. It is good to hear that. And it looks like this individual will be willing to push back against Gary Gensler. In fact, so take a look at this quote. Ether, I've suggested that it's a commodity. That's a quote that Benham said at the Regulating Financial Innovation event Monday morning. Chairman Gensler thinks otherwise, or at least hasn't certainly declared one or the other. And that's, that's a direct quote from CFTC Chair Benham. So he's recognizing, he's kind of putting Gary Gensler in the spotlight being, mm, well, and it's funny how Gary Gensler, he always likes to say, well, I don't, I don't talk about specific projects until he talks about a specific project, Bitcoin. He does that. But, he, you know, as SEC chair, that's the only one that he does. It was 
constantly saying, well, I'm not going to talk about specific projects until he just happens to randomly feel like talking about one. Uh, it's completely absurd. I'm just saying, just keep this on your radar. Something might happen. I don't want it to. I don't know what's probable, but it's certainly possible. Um, now take a look at this from Eleanor Terrett from, uh, again, who is a journalist from Fox Business Network, uh, tweeted out the following. In a letter to Gary Gensler, Senator Elizabeth Warren, Warren and AOC ask him to clarify what he's doing to stop the revolving door issue between the agency and the crypto industry. And the full letter, it's, it's right here. I'm not going to read this whole thing. I don't think it's necessary to get the you know some of the more key points across here. I just scrolled down. So if you guys want to pause, here, I'll scroll back up. You can just pause at any points that you find to be interesting. But I did want to share specifically a couple thoughts as well as this quote from Eleanor Turret. Uh, she tweeted out, and this is from that uh, letter that was written to Gensler. Over 200 government officials have moved between public service and crypto firms, serving as advisors, board members, investors, lobbyists, legal counsel, or in-house executives, end quote. And so look, the thing about this is AOC and Senator Warren and the other three members of Congress that, that, that uh, signed on to this letter, while I would actually agree with that particular point, they're using it to, in an attempt to tear crypto to, cri crypto to shreds. They're using it to attack the world. Look at how bad it is. And look, here's another thing that's happening in crypto. And they just think it's awful, which is unfortunate. But uh, the thing about this is this type of behavior has been occurring since the earliest of days. You know, the, the SEC revolving door, uh, These, this was happening in the, the world of finance. Like all sorts of people at the highest levels of the SEC would go work for major financial firms after leaving the SEC. So the fact that they're now financial firms that also happen to be in crypto, uh, it's effectively the same thing, but they're using it. And that's why I want to call it out. They're using it to attack crypto as if it's something unique to crypto. It's not unique to crypto. So I would say, okay, perhaps it's reasonable to have a discussion about maybe stopping this type of behavior because it's just understood that if you're at a high level at the SEC and some other government agencies, uh, you're not going to be there forever. Eventually, you're going to go back into the private world. You're not going to be working for the government a lot for many of these people anyway. And if there's an understanding that that's a strong possibility and you, you meet people along the way, that may impact how people uh, you know, legislate and, and uh, you know, advise on policy when they're at the highest levels of, of government, including the SEC. So if they know that that's not a possibility to work there, well, I, that might change some things. Might, don't you think? Wouldn't that be reasonable? So it's not something that's crypto specific. But, and yes, I'd agree that it's it's an issue absolutely worth talking about. I just don't like it when they're using it to attack crypto. That's the problem from my perspective. Uh, John Deaton's crypto law organization responded to that from Eleanor Turton and said, a letter from five Democratic members of Congress, which has an anti-crypto tone and implies the industry lacks legitimacy, demands answers from the SEC on its rapidly spinning revolving door. Even the anti-crypto caucus sees it. And let me scroll down. And then uh, the uh, crypto also said, if the pro-crypto caucus doesn't get serious about SEC oversight on policy and ethics, how is there going to be trust in this government from digital asset holders? Well, that's a very good question. So th the people who are pro-crypto don't like this. And the people who are anti-crypto don't like this, but for a different reason. They don't like it because they want to use this argument to tear down crypto. <laughs> And we want to use it because this is our point, this argument up because it harms it's it's harmful to free markets operating as they should in terms of how crypto should and ultimately will be adopted. So coming from a little bit of a different place there. Uh, then there was also this from Eleanor Turret. She said uh, in Senator Warren's letter to financial regulators, she references the left leaning watchdog group Tech Transparency Project which did a, a report in February analyzing the number of Washington insiders now in the crypto industry. And check this out. This is amazing to me because this is this report is being used by people at the highest level of government, including Senator Warren and AOC. And it contains numerous factually incorrect things, which are if you, you're just going to blow your mind. If, if, if you're in the XRP community, and I'm willing to bet just about 100% of you are, because this is an XRP centric channel, uh, yeah, that's pretty amazing what was stated here. So check this out. Eleanor continues. She says, having read the report, I think it underscores the fractured understanding of the crypto industry. For example, the report refers to Coinbase, Stellar, and Ripple as being the largest players in the industry. And that's a quote, largest players in the industry, 
with Ripple being the main competitor of Coinbase. And I kid you not, that's a direct quote. And I looked this up. I was like, they really said that? And I looked at full context. Not that I thought Eleanor would be misleading. That's not why. I just wanted to see it with my own eyes. And sure enough, they literally state in full, if, even if you see it in full context, which you can do, they're stating that <laughs> the main competitor of Coinbase is Ripple. Ripple is a fintech startup that helps money move around the planet, not a cryptocurrency exchange, damn it. What these bitches be saying? It, it's, so, it's like, it's funny, but it's so stupid. And, and so they're referencing this and writing to Gary Gensler to try and use those points to destroy crypto. This is real life right now. Holy hell. Eleanor continues. Hinman is also referenced in the report, which describes him as being at the center of a court fight and media controversy over whether his ties to the crypto industry influenced the SEC to give Ether and Bitcoin a free pass. And so um, that actually, that last point, that's fair to bring up, but you know why they're bringing it up again, don't you? The shadiness here, Bill Henneman, the, the questions of impropriety to make crypto look bad, not because we want a, a, a transparent uh, world of crypto where free markets get to figure stuff out. No, no, no. They're using this to try and shred crypto. So I, I have a problem with the motive. You know? uh, and then there is this from uh, John Deaton's a crypto law organization again, who responded to that from Eleanor and said, accountability for SEC officials is always a goal, but arguing for it in the service of destroying crypto is disingenuous. This exposes the dangers of pro-innovation members of Congress not doing more to investigate conflicts of interest at the SEC. And then in a separate comment, John Dean's crypto law also said, they might have spent a little more time on quality research. It would have bolstered the claim that they are genuinely seeking accountability among government officials and not just co-opting Hinman's actions to make a larger anti-crypto argument. Well, amen, crypto law, 100% on board with that perspective. So uh, you all let me know what you think in the comment section below, but I'm going to zip on out of here for now. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.